Uh, we're good. Oh, that's butter. That's butter. Oh my God. Real quick, because I want to get into some Starfield. I got a couple things that I want to go over with you guys. So this is not a review. You guys can expect to see a full review on my channel within the next month or so. This is just going to be my first impressions. And the only opinions you're going to get are that based on the unboxing process and, and initial setup. My relationship with VKB is that they send me products to use on stream and possibly do a review uh, on YouTube later. And that's it. No money exchanges hands. All my opinions are my own. Uh, you can save 5% by using code subliminal at checkout at VKB if you guys are interested in these sticks or any other products. But none of that money goes to me. It's just to save you guys some money. And with all that out of the way, let's get into it. All right, guys, let's get into it. So today we're going to be unboxing the VKB Gunfighter Force. Gunfighter Force with the Cosmo Sema grips. Got a left and a right hand here for us to unbox. I've been waiting a really long time to get my hands on these. I've actually had them sitting back here on the shelf for almost a month while I've taken kind of a, a break from content creation. Well, I'm back and excited to get these flagship VKB sticks in my hands. So um, let's get started with what we have on the outside of the box. We've got the 32 bit arm power, we've got precise handling. We've got ball bearings inside, dampeners, magnetic sensors, and intelligent controller. I'm pretty sure all of this is the same as the Mark III's. The differences are is that the new uh, Mark IVs have a next generation clutch that has extra smooth movement, okay, as well as some other things. I'm gonna save the best for last. The Black Box Three is a new version that's a little bit more powerful. The frequency is gonna be higher, which I guess could mean that it could be more accurate, um, but that kind of goes over my head. Um, it will allow you to um, easily swap your grip so that the, the software in the background can update to understanding that you have that new grip. So if you like to bounce from DCS to Star Citizen, this is gonna be great for you. And a, uh, a new type of connector uh, between the base and the grip that allows you to also change those sticks out more. Now, I wouldn't say on the fly, you can't hot swap change them, but it's just a lot more simple than what it used to be, all right? And you won't feel like you're, like, I felt like when I had the Gladiator NXTs, that if I had to change out the, the grip, every time I did that, it would degrade the integrity of the stick more and more. Most people aren't gonna have a problem with that, but. Just for those people out there who do, this is great. I think it really should be for an enthusiast grade stick like this. I think if you're gonna be paying this much money for joysticks, you should probably be playing all types of games if it's something that you're into, all right? I can't believe I missed this. I gotta put it back. I said I was gonna save the best for last, but I just forgot about it. Um, spring pretensioners. So what you could do is when we take the skirt off, I'll show you, but when we get to that part, I'm gonna cut, cut this back in, is you can actually adjust the tension on the springs without changing the springs. Ah! Like that's like the best thing out of all this, the best upgrade in my opinion out of all this. Really, really, really awesome that you can adjust the tension on your springs without actually having to change the springs. Okay, so that's the differences between the Mark III's and the Mark IV's. A little bit of backstory on uh, my joystick progression. I started with the T16,000Ms, you guys can't see it in the shot, it's just out of reach. Um, I used those from 2018 to about 2020, and back in 2020, VKB sent me their gunfighters that I have back here, and I've been using those up until today, basically, and um, I love those sticks. They're, they're really good, but I've always wanted to have the flagship. I think that this is a little bit more than I'd recommend most people to spend, but if you have the funds, I think that this is going to be a great route to go, and I'm so excited to get my hands on it finally. Um, all right, let's, uh, let's go ahead and start unboxing it here. That's the front of the packaging there. Got a little tab that opens up. And we can start unboxing. 
So the first thing we have here in the box is our quick installation guide. Very similar to uh, what you would see from the gunfighters for any of you guys who are upgrading from that. You've got some of the grips that you can choose from here. Because you can get these with included with the grip that you want. This is going to be our, our quick setup guide for the, the inside uh, gimbal part there. That's pretty cool. Quick setup guide. You definitely want to keep that. Okay. I don't think that this is really too important. This is safety guidelines and stuff like that. I think we'll be fine. The first thing we have here at the top is the metal plate. I'm not going to be using that. I have mounts, which by the way, too, I might also show you guys my predator mounting plates that uh, triple from predator mount sent me. You've got a little baggie here that has our grip so that we could change the height of the grip depending on the size of our hands, a little screwdriver, change out the hat switch. A lot of the stuff I actually already have because the grip that is coming with these gunfighters is the same grip that I have been and a lot of you guys have been using on the BKB gunfighter uh, series the, with the Cosmo SEMA grip. So it's actually the exact same thing. In theory, I could just buy the gimbal base and just put my old stick on it. But I want to keep those so I can continue supporting the community with my bindings for those. So even though I'm uh, upgrading, I'm still going to uh, help you guys with that because I know that's the vast majority of the community. Well, we got cams in here, a bag full of cams and springs. We'll get more into each of those individually in a minute. We've got our black box. We've got, let me just take the whole styrofoam piece out. Oh. Look at that gimbal, boys. So there's no plate that covers the bottom of it when interesting. So that just screws into your mount or the base that it comes. Oh, okay. Uh, maybe I'm missing something just to make sure. Okay, we got USB 2.0 cable. The connector that goes from the black box to the stick. And oh, I've seen this before. I don't really necessarily know what it's for. It's like a sticker or badge or something. The Cosmo SEMA badge. The Cosmo SEMA grip, if you don't know, uh, I say that word a lot. It may be confusing. Is the space combat grip. Also known as the space combat grip. They're this, the same same item. I'm just going to open these one at a time. Of course, the other stick is just going to be. So the right stick that I have not opened yet is going to be the exact same thing. All right. So oh, it feels nice to have a, a, a new grip in my hand, a new Cosmo SEMA grip. It, it feels. Um, my older one's more worn, so it's, it feels smooth. They may have upgraded the plastic on this. It, um, it's much more matte less of a glossy sheen to it. I kind of like that because I don't like fingerprints. But we'll have to see how this holds up uh, over time. Okay, yeah, the base of the grip is definitely different. Not sure what camera angle will be best for that. This part here is definitely different. So if you were to upgrade to the upgrade your gunfighters, you'd have to get a conversion kit to, to do this. But I love how VKB is modular and at least gives you the option to even do that. All right, so then we've got our gimbal here. It's got a, a skirt. Is that what they call this? That's what I would call it, but I don't know if that's actually what it's called. All metal construction inside. Love it. I love the connector too. It's kind of like a... Now, this part isn't metal. Here, this plastic part, of course, the silver part that you see is metal. I kind of would have expected this to be metal, but I, I don't know why. Maybe because um, I, I, I've fallen down the YouTube rabbit hole of enthusiast keyboards. So I kind of expect those connectors to be metal, but it's fine. It's no big deal. It's not something you're going to really be interacting with. Okay. Yeah. So it looks like the base has the four holes there, and then there's four screw holes here that will match up. So it'll sit just like that. Now, again, I'm not going to use that. I'm probably never going to connect it to that because I, I have mounts. Just want to unpackage the USB cable. And we're going to go through what's in these little bags here. 
All right, now that I have everything laid out here, I kind of want to go over everything that was in the box. So, yep, we got a quick start guide. We've got our USB 2.0 cable. It's the Type B. It may not be Type B. The one that looks like a house. You know what I'm talking about, like a printer cable. We've got the aviator connected, the aviator looking cable that connects the black box to the gimbal itself. We have the gimbal itself. The boot is already installed has a little protective uh, cover that covers the part where the stick connects to it. Comes with a little screwdriver that we're not gonna use because we have an iFixit kit. This looks like what I saw, there's like these like little rubber or plastic, it's probably rubber, grips that go around the spring. I don't, I guess to cover it, I'm not sure why you need that, but we'll figure it out. I've seen those on the springs themselves in the videos that VKB has put out. You've got your black box with your connector. Now it has a connector here for pedals. I don't know if I'm gonna connect my pedals through here or if I want them to just be plugged in like they are now with its own black box and USB cable, but that may be nice. Maybe it might be beneficial or easier to just connect the pedals directly to the stick itself. But anyway, uh, you got the USB port there and then the, the two connectors here, all right? And then we have springs, springs for days, 40 pound springs, 30 pound springs, 20 pound and 10 pound springs. We've got cams here. Now, I don't necessarily know what these cams are. I'm assuming that they're giving us two aviation cams and two space cams. Uh, one thing I don't like so far is that it's pretty clear that there's an aviation cam already in the gunfighter base, but this pack came with the Cosmo SEMA grip, which is kind of weird to me, but maybe it's too much trouble for them to, to have uh, bases that are already put together with the uh, space cam, with both different cams. So anyway, but that's not that, that big of a deal. I think that anyone who buys these sticks should kind of jump in head first and do a cam swap. So yeah, so we've got an aviation cam, aviation, uh, AVAH. I'm assuming that it means aviation. I could be wrong on that. Then we've got space H, we've got space S, and then inside we must have space, or I'm sorry, we must have a aviation S. We've got these four screws, which look like they can only be the screws that would mount, uh, that would mount the gunfighter base to either your mounts or the plate that it comes with. Of course, we have the plate, but again, I'm not going to be using that. We have the Cosmo SEMA grip. You guys are very, very familiar with this. If you want to learn more about this, check out my VKB Gladiator reviews the the grip is the same so anytime i'm talking about that it's going to be the exact same thing uh we've got our grip this is for if you decide you want to re to remove the rapid fire trigger you can remove it and this is a cover for that I i've had i got a bunch of these around from my other sticks and um i only recently figured out what that what that was we've got a tool that will allow us to um, add our add, add and remove our springs, which fun fact, I don't really think you need that anymore with the spring period tensioner feature that comes included in the gunfighter mark fours. We have our uh, grip just to, to swap out the the palm rest, I guess is the best word for it. Right now we have the medium size one. This is the large, which which means smaller hands, medium size hands. And then if you have larger hands and you want to take off the, the small one and just use the part that comes with it. Again, more on the grip itself in that VKB Gunfighter review. I think this is actually a coaster, which is pretty cool. Got a VKB Cosmo SEMA coaster there. Pretty dope, huh? We've got, just like the Gunfighters, we have uh, a hat switch. Now, you can swap out this analog switch here for a hat switch if you want to. It'll still be the same like little knob, but it will act as a hat instead. It won't be analog. Then we have a button swap too. So if you want to change this button here, this thumb button, instead of it being a four-way hat with, with center push, you can change it to just be a button. Don't know why you'd want to do that, but you'd basically be downgrading to a standard if you 
took out the rapid fire trigger, replaced it with this, and took out that uh, eight-way analog hat or that yeah eight-way analog hat and replaced it with a four-way hat. This little baggie here has uh, these little connector pieces that will allow us to connect our grip to the gunfighter base itself. And they gave me a little Allen key. Again, not gonna use that, I got an iFixit kit. All right, so I have removed everything from the table that I don't think I need right now. Um, so we're gonna go over this. One thing I did mention, uh, forget to mention when I was going through everything that came in the box, this looks like some sort of a bracket that will allow you to mount the a black box to something. And I guess it has some uh, cable management there. Maybe it goes on this way. Anyway, um, so I may want to put that on, I, I don't know. But the, what I'm gonna do today is adjust the spring tensioners and the dampeners and kind of get the stick to where I want to go, or where I want it set up. I'm not gonna change any cams. I may do that in another video or just link you to VKB's video, but uh, let's, uh, let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so we got the right Allen key. So let's go ahead and we're gonna take the dust cover off. Pretty simple. Okay, all those screws are off. Uh, what I need to do first is remove the, the, the cams, like this whole assembly from the board that's on the, that's attached to the rim of this here. I don't know the names of these things, but you're gonna wanna pinch this a little bit. Kinda hard to do with the camera angle and everything to remove that. So then now, I can take the dust cover off. Okay, so that comes off. And I'm all, I can also remove this whole top part out of there, okay? Um, I'll show you guys what's inside. I'm not sure what camera is gonna be better to, to show you, but that's our cam. Right here, this little part that looks like, I don't know, this big metal, metal piece. But let's stick with the top camera. It keeps overheating on me, by the way. It's been hours. I'm hours into this recording, even though it's a couple minutes for you guys. I think what this is, is to prevent something from getting pinched in there, either you or maybe a cable or something. I think that's what this is for, for the spring, because this can be adjust, adjusted with the spring pretensioner, like I said. But I really like this here. We'll, we'll do a little bit of... That is so cool. I just love seeing the inner, inner workings of that. Uh, now that we have that taken out, I'm gonna put it back in the right way. And we're gonna install the grip once I get this connected back. Connecting it back, really simple. Just plug that back into there and then reroute the cables around this little guide that we have here. Very simple. You obviously want to make sure that these are not in the way of the uh, articulating movements of the the gimbal. So that all looks that all looks good. All right. So now that we have the dust cover off, okay, um, what we can do is adjust uh, four different screws here. So the dampeners are are located here and here. And the spring pretensioners are located here and here. I hope that was clear. If not, I'll show it in an image. So uh, the first thing I'm gonna wanna do is actually screw these screws back in. The screws that kept the dust cover on, I'm gonna put these back in because I wanna be able to connect the Cosmosema grip and actually like kind of get a feel for it before I finish, you know, putting the, the dust cover and everything back on. All right, it doesn't need to be tightened all the way, it just needs to be uh, tightened in a little bit there. So we've got two little baggies here. These rods attach the grip to the gimbal, right? And this attach attaches the gimbal to your base plate, which in my case is gonna be Predator mounts and not the, the uh, included plate. So I'm going to open this up. So we have this little rod here. I'm going to link you guys a setup video for this. 
you shouldn't watch my video for the setup guide. I just want to give someone who has not purchased these, wants to learn more information, what it is like to set it up. But I'm going to link you to their video. It's much better. It's going to give a much better explanation on how to actually get this connected. Okay, so these there's three extra screws in here, and I don't know what those are for. Actually, there's a lot. I think all of that is extra screws. I only think I'm going to need this part here. So what I'm going to do is grab this end of the screw, uh, the side that I'm holding here, and twist this end off. Okay, and what that's going to give me it's it's a long it's a long screw. <laughs> so we got this end here. And it's got this little divot on one side. It's going to be impossible for me to really show you guys, but, <clears throat> and then we've got this screw with a washer. Okay. I'm going to just set those aside there. And what we're going to do is we're going to take each of these and put them on one side of the joystick. It's going to kind of fall in, into place here. Yeah. So this only goes in one way. You can see by the shape of it, it fits in very easily. All right, so you're going to take this. It can't go in the wrong way. You're going to set it inside of here. Like that. Make sure the part with the divot is in the inside. And sorry, it's very hard to hold on to this and also uh, show you guys with the camera. Welcome to uh, YouTube. -y. All right, so now that that's in there, I'm going to take off this little rubber piece of rubber protection here. My hands are sweaty because it's very hot in here with all these lights. Take that off. And then we have the actual metal piece that connects the grip to the base. This is all metal, all metal. And uh, I want to talk about this. This part here is all plastic, in case you can't tell from the camera. Plastic. The, the part in the middle that's silver is obviously metal. That part is metal. Uh, I don't get any feeling of this being cheap. Just pointing out what's plastic and what's metal. And I'm sorry, the, the part I put in earlier fell out. Let's go ahead and install the grip on there now. I'm just going to try to hold this together so it doesn't fall out again on me. All right, so now that I got that in there, I'm just going to go ahead and plug it in right to the base. Okay. There was a little knob that stuck up at the bottom of the gimbal that fit right into place. Two, two knobs, one obviously main rod that goes up, and then there's like a little smaller one to make sure you have it on, not at, a, at, a, at an angle. We're gonna put the screw and washer back in and tighten it up. Okay, be careful not to over tighten. That looks good. So now that we have the grip, connected to the base, we're going to want to adjust the spring pretensioners and the dampeners to get the feel that we want. I definitely should have done the right stick first, but uh, we're good. Oh, that's butter. That's butter. Oh my God. You know how you buy something and you expect a thing and it's never exactly what you expected you still are happy of the purchase but you never it's never 100 percent. this is literally exactly what i felt like this would feel like this is so smooth so smooth not to harp on the gunfighters best sticks most good for most people but if you're an enthusiast that that was that's really smooth that's really smooth holy oh my goodness okay look at that okay so anyway i'm sorry uh i digress <laughs> um let's 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 first adjust the the dampener here yes yeah, so you just kind of move the stick out of the way and i can tighten both of the dampeners i'm gonna tighten them all the way i know you guys can't see this but i'll i'll overlay a uh a, a video of it because you, you can't really see in there but I'm, I'm adjusting the dampeners here and i have them tighter so you see how it takes longer for it to return back to center that that's probably how i want it for my left stick 
I'm okay with that. The right stick, I want to be loose. I, I, I don't, I'm not sure if you can over tighten those. I don't want to tighten them anymore because I tighten it quite a bit. I think that's going to be good for the left stick. Slower return the center. That's going to be good for my throttle, if you want to call it that. I do plan on getting an Omni throttle adapter for this too. But yeah, I, I, th I think I like that. Very, very smooth. All right, so next up, what I want to do is adjust the spring pretensioner. I think the better tool for that is going to be an actual Allen key, like an L-shaped Allen key, because of how much room we have here. But you just drop this down in there and then tighten it. You can see which way tightens it and which way loosens. I'll, again, I'll overlay portions of the video to show you guys what it looks like to when when the spring pretensioner is adding tension to the spring. I'm gonna just tighten them just a little bit so we can kind of get a feel see what it feels like to with the difference between basically in the middle versus now. Yeah it snaps back to center a lot faster. I don't I don't want that for for my throttle. All right. So that looks like it's back to center and this feels really smooth. That is the best way to describe it is it's, is it's really, really smooth. All right. So with that back all tightened up kind of the way I want, at least I think I'm going to connect it to the base. Now this is my first time actually opening this, but this is my little care package from predator mounts. It's a very simple plate. Powder coated aluminum. Remember, you guys can save 5% on any Predator Mounts products uh, by using code subliminal. Remember, a Predator Mounts is pretty back ordered right now with orders. So make sure you pay attention to whatever uh, top post he has on top of the page. You can get kind of a lead time on how long it's going to take. If it's something you need immediately, may not be an option for you, but they come highly recommended by me. Very uh, inexpensive for uh, what you get. Really, really good quality, and it can save you a ton. Looks like Predator Mounts actually gave me more of the screws that VKB already is going to... Oh, I'm probably going to have to use the Predator Mounts ones. Let's let's take a look and see if there's actually a difference in the screw. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm, I think I'm going to have to use the, the screws that, that Predator Mounts gives me, which requires a, um, a, a Phillips head screwdriver. Now that I got that connected there, we're going to go ahead and install our plate which it's pretty clear which way it's going to go because it's got like a, a groove in there for the screw to go in. I mean, it's so hot in here, guys. It's like 105 degrees outside in Texas right now. It's ridiculous. Today's Pokemon Go Fest. I can't go. I might not come back home alive. All right. It's pretty cool that the, that the, the plate for the mount is mounted just like directly to the stick. Bam. I just put that on the aluminum extrusion and it's mounted on there with nothing extra sticking out. Like, let's look at this from the top. You have nothing extra sticking out. That's one of the, the things I'm really excited about this is the Predator Mounts plates are form fitting to the design of the gunfighter. So there's no extra, like all this stuff kind of gets in the way when you're sitting at your desk that you also work on. Like, I don't know if a lot of you guys are like that. Some of you guys may, may just come home and get to your sim pit or whatever. But for me, I'm sitting at the desk editing videos, doing, you know, content creator stuff, playing, playing other games. And I really like the fact that this is just such a slim profile. You can't get any slimmer. Awesome. Okay. So with that connected, we can connect our connector here. There's a little groove at the bottom. Not focusing, that's fine. The top camera got it, I'm sure. Make sure that that groove is at the top. Twist that, you got that. Now, we're gonna connect this to the black box and uh, according to VKB, it doesn't matter which one of these you plug it into. Yep, all right, that's tight in there. And then all you need to do is connect your USB cable and there we go. 
We got our first stick ready to go. The only thing we need to do now is re uh, apply the dust cover, but because I may want to make some changes to it, I'm not going to do that yet. I'm going to do that after I get the, the right stick set up. I'm going to cut to that part because setting up the right stick is just going to be exactly the same. And we will catch you guys when I get that set up. All right. So the setup on that went easier than the first because now I've done it before and it went very smooth. This is the right stick. So this is the one I think is more important to have dialed into where you want. Just my personal opinion. And everyone's opinions on this are going to be different. And that's what's awesome about this is that we could go from this to what I want is the exact opposite. I want it to be more loose. I don't want to have to fight the stick for my aiming hand. All right. So this is about where it is stock. Uh, VKB uh, recommends to tighten them to tighten and then kind of like loosen it until you get to that point. So I've actually tightened them up a little bit more than it was from stock. Um, and as you can see, it's a little bit more like sluggish on its on its fight back to center. And I, I can I can kind of feel the gimbal and that that's not what I'm looking for. So uh, I'm going to start out with the dampeners. I'm gonna use my thumb to, to push the stick and in, in away from the the Allen deal here. One of the things I really like about VKB and their setup process with this is that there's only one size Allen key for the whole thing. So outside of mounting this to Predator mounts, I, I use the same key on my iFixit kit. So I really like that. I hate having to deal with multiple different sizes of screws. All right, so what we're gonna do is loosen up the Y-axis dampener first. That's closest to the gimbal here. Gonna loosen it. It's kind of hard to tell when you've loosened it too much. If it wiggles a little bit, then you know it's, it's, it, you've loosened it too much. So get it to the, if you want it loose, get it to the point of wiggling and then <laughs> dial it in. Star Citizen fans will get that, get that. Uh, all right. Very hard to show this to you guys, but this is the X axis dampener now. We're going to loosen that up, kind of wiggling a little bit. Let's see what that looks like. That didn't really do anything. So I think the, the, the tension on the springs is too much. So let's do that now. So we're going to go with the, the bottom one is the x-axis spring tensioner. Okay. So let's loosen this up. I, I, I kind of have to see how high it goes. It's really cool how this works. Like this is super, it's actually really simple. It's very simple. All right, now let's do y-axis. You might want to use the actual Allen key that came with it for this part because it can get into a tighter space. This kind of screwdriver type deal isn't really ideal, but I think I need to loosen it more. Much more free there. All right, so I think I've got it dialed into about where I want it. And I'm gonna kind of show you how loose this is. It's up to your personal preference. I want this to be loose and free. And this is like, it's very smooth this way. I almost don't feel the gimbal until I'm at the edges of the, um, of like its range of motion. Really nice, I like it like that. What I'm gonna do, and I don't suggest you do this, at least not for any extended period of time, I'm actually not gonna put the boot back on. I'm going to show you how to put the, the boot or the dust cover back on, but I'm going to take it back off so that I can dial it in as I play because I may not like this when I get into the game. It may be a little bit too loose. But in order to do that, and this is one kind of criticism I have for this process, is that to get the boot back on, I have to take the stick back off and then put and put take the stick off, put the boot on, uh, put the, put the, the, the dust, I'm sorry, du let's stick with one word, dust cover. Uh, take the stick off, put the dust cover back on, and then put the stick back on again. I don't really like that, but I because all of the controls are here at the top, there really isn't anything you could do, and you can't access them through the dust cover. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to take off these four screws here at the top. 
All right, those four screws are disconnected. Well, okay, this last one, pretty long, pretty long thread. The next screw is going to be the screw that we put into the side of the of this of the stick there to get the grip to stay. We're going to loosen that. We're going to actually take it all the way out. Okay, got that end of it there, and we're going to pull it out of the other end. I don't want it to fall into the gimbal if possible. Okay, that came out much easier once I got some a little bit longer to push it out. All right, so we got a little dowel is what I want to call it. Well, the each side of it plus the screw, we got that taken out. So now we can take the grip off the base. Nice and easy. And we're going to put our dust cover back on. Put the dust cover back on now. We can put in these four screws. All right, with all four of those screws back in, I'm gonna go ahead and put the stick back on the base. And we'll just insert these two dowels back in here, just like we did in the initial setup. Again, I'm not gonna do that because I'm gonna take the boot off because I feel like I'm gonna still wanna make some adjustments to the gimbal here, but I will redo this back again once I get it dialed in to be perfect. So. With that being said, I think I'm done for the most part with the unboxing and I want to get to some of my preliminary thoughts. As you guys know, this isn't a review, so we're not going over um, too many of my opinions because I haven't even used the stick yet. Um, <clears throat> expect a review to be out within the next month or so. Uh, one thing I didn't mention was that the second box, the only difference is, is that the A1 hat and the C1 button replacements to basically downgrade to a standard are have a different color package here so when you're storing these you'll be able to look at it at a glance and know which one it's for it also basically says on there with the acronym scgrp space combat grip right premium space combat grip right premium and then you know a1 and c1 hat and then of course the left uh will just have the, the same exact thing but l instead of r so the setup was really nice. The only issues that I really had were that I wish I could adjust all of these things from the side somehow. I don't know how they would do that. I mean, they would have to radically change the design. Uh, I don't even know if they'd have, they call it a gunfighter anymore because I don't know how they could allow you to adjust it from the side, but I'm still gonna put this out there. Not a big deal at all. I think most people are gonna spend maybe the first couple of days, maybe a week, maybe tweaking it if you care. And then after that, you're going to set it and forget it. But it would be nice if I could just take my Allen key here from the side and make all these changes there without having to remove the grip, remove the dust cover, make the change and put all that back on. It's yeah, it's just it's a lot more work than I think it, it, it needs to be. But it's still um, really, really easy process for changing the grip regardless. That's another good thing that I've seen so far is I'm considering getting into a little bit of DCS and it would be nice to know that I can, you know, change my grip in five minutes. That's, that's really not, that's not too bad at all. Five to 10 minutes and you can change out your grip uh, is, is, is pretty, pretty excellent. The uh, connectors, all very good, like really good quality products that you'd expect from VKB. Um, the plastic seems to be newer like a, it's like a different it's not i don't think their plastic is coming from the same place that it did with these other sticks it could just be maybe mine or two years old and they feel a little bit different and i'm just looking at a brand new stick it's less of a sheen to it less um it's even more like matte almost like it's uh powder coated it's not powder coated but it, if if you understand what i'm trying to say and i like it it looks it looks like super stealth black and it's got a nice grip to it because of that so that's really good. As far as, you know, your hand sizes, hand sizes, I think are pretty good. I had pretty decent sized hands and I had to take the, as you guys can see, I took the palm rest off here. That's where I kind of feel more comfortable. And then, you know, if your hands are smaller, you can put the pads back on. The, the smaller pad, the, like one level up from this wasn't too bad. I could, I could keep it on if I wanted to. It'd give me a little bit of extra grip for my hand slipping off this way. 
but I don't really have that much of an issue with that at all. So another thing that I really like too, is that I only needed to use one tool for this whole thing. I just put this one Allen key in here and that was all that I used this entire time. You don't have to find the right tool. You know what? That's fine. I don't fucking need you. <laughs> the overhead camera just died. I don't know if I'm gonna keep this part in or not, but it's been dealing with this. It's been like, since I started recording, it's been like six hours dealing with, with that. We have to stop, it overheats and, uh, okay. Um, but yes, one tool uh, to rule them all. One tool to rule them all, I think is, is dope. You just pull out the right Allen key and you can do whatever you need take, take, to take stuff off, to make changes. And I think it works all throughout the entire thing. The only time I needed a Phillips head was to mount the base or the, the gimbal to the Predator mounts plate. And Predator mounts just chooses a Phillips head. No biggie. That's, that's something that you're not really going to, have to take off very often unless you want to change a cam or change a spring. And um, I think changing springs is going to be more of a uh, long-term maintenance thing rather than like um, customization because you can adjust it with the spring tensioners. So I've been waiting a long time for these and, uh, and I'm really excited. It's, it's uh, making me excited to play star citizen and um, yeah. Catch me on my live stream. Uh, I don't know what days I'm going to stream yet. I haven't streamed in two months now. I've been taking a little bit of a break, but I'm, I'm about ready to be done with that. 3.20 is coming out. Uh, and I want to get back into Star Citizen. I want to get into these sticks. And um, I can't wait to use them with you guys. So catch me there live. And more videos will be coming to the YouTube channel on these. Also, if you like using my bindings for the Gladiator NXTs, I will be making bindings for these as well. So stay tuned for all that. Peace out.